Hey wizard. So it's been a while since I posted on this channel and that's just because I had absolutely no value to share with you, but that's changed today. Today I've got some real value because I've been running some back tests, etc., and some machine learning. And it doesn't matter if you're into machine learning or not for this video. If you're into trading and investing, you're going to love this. Um, particularly if you don't know about the topic that I'm about to talk about. So I've run the strategy and it's pretty much doubled the returns of the market and the sharp ratio has gone up exponentially. And I'm not doing anything crazy, right? Everything I'm doing here, there's no look ahead bias in what I'm doing, etc, etc, etc. This is like, this is like unbelievable, like so much so that it's affected my sleep. I'm really excited about it. So I wanted to share it, share it with you. What am I talking about? So let's take a look at this graph here. This is the S&P 500 or it's the SPY ETF. And I picked on the S&P 500 because, I mean, when you talk about the stock market, it's a very good represent, re representation of the market and how it's performing. And what I was wondering about is what are the different regimes that a market can be in objectively? You know, people talk about, oh, we're in an uptrend or a downtrend or a channel market. And that's, you know, to me, it's irrelevant because based on that, how do you know whether statistically you're likely to make money in this uptrend that you say is an uptrend just because the moving average is a certain way, right? And I'm not saying that's a terrible way to tell what sort of market we're in. What I'm saying is it doesn't help me understand yes or no, do I go and place a trade or not? Like yes or no, am I in or am I not? So I've been looking for ways to take away you know, any subjective guesswork and to put in a no brainer, if you don't trade this, you're stupid. Like that's what I'm trying to figure out for myself. And that's always what I'm trying to figure out, you know, when I'm doing this sort of analysis. And so I took this S&P 500 and using something called a Gaussian mixture model, right? You can actually, if for those of you who do Python, uh, SK Learn has this mixture mix import. Um, and within that, you have this thing called a Gaussian mixture model. And I think this thing has been around since, you know, the, the 1980s or whatever. So again, just to show you the code for that, here it is, right? You can take a screenshot on your phone or wherever you're watching this. Um, and you could, you could literally Google the documentation. It'll show you how to code this up. And so what I've done is I've gone and plugged this into the S and P 500. Now, why is this so special? What makes this so special? It's very similar to the same concept of finding hidden states as what's called hidden Markov models. So what is happening is you're using probabilities and evidence from those probabilities to infer a state in the market or what I'm going to call a regime. What do I mean by that? Let's actually explain that in English. So what I mean by that is if I take a bunch of data, so here you can see some data, right? So open, high, low, close, etc. cetera. Um, I can compute the returns and I can compute what I'm going to call the range here, which is basically the difference between the high and the low. So how wide how big was the price movement that day, i.e. how much volatility is there, you know, that day. And the returns are just, you know, current day divided by yesterday, basically minus one. So percentage change, that's all the returns represent. And I'm taking those two dimensions, those two features, and I'm plugging them into this model. And this model is looking at those and seeing, okay, based on the different combinations and sequences, etc., uh, and prob basically probability distributions of this, can I derive a number of states that the market can be in? To me, it's a bit like this, you know, let's say there's a newborn baby, or it's not newborn, it's a baby, and it's sitting in a baby chair, and it's crying, and it's, it, it's cries, it has different tones of cries, different frequencies of crying, and you don't know, is it hungry? Is it sad? Does it just want to play? Like, what does this baby want, right? Well, if you could capture all of those um, different sounds, etc., cetera, um, the baby makes, you could model different states that baby could be in. And from there, try to infer and guess, okay, is it a happy state, a sad state, whatever. And this is all done through, 
I'm going to call it complex math. I'm sure these people are much smarter than me who follow this channel. Like, sure, it's not even that complex. I think it's complex. I can't do the math. That's Therefore, I rely on the programming to do it. But basically, what you're doing is you're taking all that information and inferring a state that that, that kid could be in, right? And in this case, the market. So here, I've got the market. It's, it's happy or it's sad. It's crying or it's not. It's crying a lot. It's crying a little. So I'm looking at the returns and the range. And from that, from that evidence we've got, and the evidence we have is price, volatility, volume, etc. From that evidence I've got, in this case, the returns in the range, I'm inferring the states the market can be in. And so what I'm doing from there is that is then embedding that into a trading strategy. And so how does that look? Right. So if I go down here and show you without doing that. So this is just uh, two strategies compared. So the blue line is basically just the returns of the market. This is the equity curve. It's, it's just the benchmark, right? So if I had bought here and sold here, um, basically I've made, what is that? That's like nearly 80% return. Okay, so that's over the last, and this is since 2017 to now 2022, June, or now, what are we in July, 1st of July now? I would have made about 80% return. Okay, great. Now, if I just did a simple moving average crossover strategy, I would have made about 70 or 71% return. In fact, I've got the numbers here. Here, I made 68% return here and 79% return is the benchmark. So the strategy, just doing a simple moving average crossover, I think I took, I just like the numbers, 12 day and 21 day. You know, how does just a boring, straightforward strategy that no one uses basically, you know, work here? And interestingly, it returns less than the market, which you would expect a moving average crossover strategy. It just won't beat them. You won't beat the market with that. Not in my opinion anyway. But the nice thing about that is you can see the sharp ratio is stronger, right? So this is not doing anything fancy yet. This is just saying, hey, we're hedging risk because it's moving average crossover. So you can see here it protected its downside because it doesn't trade if, you know, say the 21 moving day average is lower than the 12 day moving average, it doesn't trade. So when that dip happens, you cut off your risk. So your sharp ratio improves. And the sharp ratio to me is the most important thing because it's saying for every dollar of risk I'm taking, how much return am I getting? So ideally you want a sharp ratio over one and 1 1.5 is excellent, right? That's an excellent sharp ratio. 1.5 to two, two is amazing. And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, pretty straightforward stuff. It doesn't beat the market, but you know, it hedges risk, straightforward strategy. Now, what happens if I go and combine this strategy here of uh, depicting what market regime we're in and then saying, I will only do the moving average crossover strategy if it's in a certain state, i.e. I will only feed the baby if I can ascertain it's in one of, you know, X states or two of X states or three of X states. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, Gaussian mixture model, or let's call it the GMM. I want you to find four states in the market, which it's done, right? So here's green. It's found the green state. It's found the red state and the orange state and the black state. Now, it doesn't tell me the green state is uptrending, right? That could have been colored red. It doesn't really matter. The point is I can, in, I can see it. I can see, okay, it's determined that this sort of green state here is uptrending orange seems to be a bit of uncertainty or a bit of a transitionary state. Red seems to be <laughs> troubles happened and black just seems to be potential market bottom or reversal. Like that's what I can ascertain from five years of data, basically. So that's the states. And I'm saying, okay, basically what I want you to do is I want you to only deploy this moving average crossover when it's in what has historically been profitable states. And so to make this a fair test, what I'm doing here is I'm training the GMM on data that I'm not going to use for backtesting my strategy. And the reason for that is I don't understand the GMM model well enough yet. I'm doing further study on that. I'll talk about that more to know that it doesn't include look ahead bias. So I want to make sure I'm putting no potential for look ahead bias into this test. 
A look ahead bias means basically for those of you who don't know that I'm including information about the future into my test, which obviously is going to be an unfair advantage. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting that possibility out altogether. So I'm training the model on this sort of chunk of data here, and then I'm going to test it on this chunk of data here. And this is what happens. So when I go and do that, you can see here now I'm starting later on in the day. My orange line outperforms my blue line. Because what I'm saying, and you don't need to understand coding to understand what I'm about to um, show you here. I just need to find it because there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot that goes into making this work. Training the model, funnily enough, is like one line of code. Everything else just takes forever. Okay, so here it is. Favorable states, one and two. So I'm looking at the different states that this has returned. And I'm selecting the ones that I know are profitable. And I'm including those. So I'm saying, okay, you know, for example, zero, one or zero, one, like it's saying it's a one, if the state's what I want it to be. And it's a zero if not. So if it's a one trade it, if it's a zero, don't. Um, so if it's a one, do the moving average crossover. If it's a zero, don't. That's basically it. And I put that into the back test model. And this is what you end up with. So you end up with a sharp ratio on the benchmark still of about 50% uh, or, or 0 0.5, sorry. And with this regime baked in, you have a sharp ratio of 3.271. Now, I'll just tell you straight up, if this orange line was below the blue line and had a sharp ratio of 3.271, I would still rather take that than trade the market without it. Because there's no guarantee that the market's not going to absolutely tank and you won't be protected from that. But here, by, by putting in these hidden states of the market, I've dramatically, dramatically improved my sharp ratio. And I know from further study of both YouTube, online and reading papers, I know that the SPY, and it was a coincidence that I chose that actually, and the Qs, QQQ, the NASDAQ uh, ETF, have performed well with this. I don't know, like I looked at it with Bitcoin, etc. Um, I didn't really mod model it more and still I could see advantages to using it. Um, but I haven't played with it enough. My point is that I will never, ever, ever, ever now trade the SPY, depending on the strategy. But let's say I'm, I'm looking at long term buy and hold strategies. I would never trade it without doing this now. Because it's just proven to me. It's just proven to me like unequivocally that you have an edge if you can detect market regimes. And when I started doing further research on this, you know, and other quants and PhD students talking about it online, you know, the feedback I'm getting is this is what institutions are looking at. This is what they're using. And actually what they're trying to predict is will the regime change? Mine just says, what regime am I in? Therefore, trade based on that. More advanced models are doing regime switching. So I've actually got some code for that here. I'll talk about that in a minute. But that's, you know, that's what they're trying to do is to predict will the regime change and get ahead of that. But let's just take that out the equation for a second and talk about where we at right now in the economy and the markets. So let's look at this now objectively. I'm going to call it the smart money. I don't really know if there is such a thing, but I'm going to call it, you know, the big money, the players with the players that move markets because they have a lot of money, right? So all these institutions and hedge funds and investment firms and whatever, they are running models, right? So they're running models for sure. They're running models that have market regimes in them. Um, you, you, you just look online, like that's what they're doing. So if they're running these models with regimes in them, and all of them are based on similar math from say the 1980s with some obvious, you know, changes and proprietary, whatever. The long and the short of it is, they're all running similar models. And so what's going to happen when this regime changes, say, from an orange to a green, is you're going to see all of these models go from being risk off to being more pro to a risk on type strategy, probably depending on the variables they have in their models, right? But broadly speaking, knowing the state that this math is predicting can help us understand when might be a good time to start averaging in heavily into investments if you have the cash. A lot of folk don't have money just to plow in. But that said, 
if you are somebody who's looking to invest in, is it not worth knowing what state the market's in and what state all these, literally all these algorithms are looking at so that we can ascertain that? So long story short is I'm going to bake this into Crypto Wizards, um, probably into Data Engineer, where you can click on you know any asset you're looking at and understand what state it's in without needing to know any of the coding, right? I want everyone, including me, because I do a lot of research and that's why I built it. I want to go there quickly and know what's going on. So that's that's one thing. The second thing is I'm spending a lot of time developing out this machine learning course um, because it's been heavily asked for. And I want to make this like the, the daddy or the mother of all courses. I really want to put everything into this. I didn't plan on putting these market regimes in. And now I'm almost embarrassed to tell you that. So we're going to cover unsupervised machine learning. We're going to cover supervised machine learning and reinforcement learning, i.e. AI, um, right from people that have never coded before or seen machine learning right to actually building them. Um, I'm not going to cover any of the math, etc., because I don't know it. Uh, and therefore, I have no right to try and teach it or talk about it. But I am going to talk about the application. So bear with me here on the channel. I'll get videos out like this when I find stuff that's really valuable. You know me. If it's if there's no value, you won't see me. If there's value, you'll see me. Um, but I hope that this was something that excites you as much as it excites me because I am excited by it. For those of you who are much smarter than me, who have done this kind of thing or seen this kind of thing, please feel free in the comments to just put your your two cents or your experience in around using these type types of models and where the pitfalls can be, because I'm not experienced enough um, to know that. So until the next one, thanks again. Take care. Talk soon.